Hey guys, I hope you guys are doing well. Um, hold on a second, let me make myself bigger. I hope you guys are doing well. I certainly am doing well. Um, now, um, for those of you who don't know, which, which, um, would be the case for most of you probably, um, I, I have quite a story to tell from this week. Um, my story probably starts two weeks back. Um, two weeks back, I started feeling there was, last Saturday, I started feeling, um, kind of off, um, kind of dizzy, kind of, um, uh, kind of, um, co coffee, not, not very, very much. I wasn't coughing, 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 but I just felt kind of off. But I ate something and then it went away. So I thought it was just diabetes. Uh, so I went along my, along my week and um, I had a few, few, um, little sneeze, sneezing and coughing, um, but no, nothing really, um, uh, nothing really to write home about, nothing really serious, so I thought, okay, I didn't even think anything of it. And then on Thursday in the day, um, it just came on me like all the symptoms i had had um really just uh came to roost i felt really i felt really sick i felt really like disoriented and dizzy and just really awful and so um, I didn't go to the hospital at that time because I thought, oh, it'll pass. Because I'm the kind of person um, that says it'll pass, it'll pass. But later on that night, wow, I woke up and I just couldn't breathe. And I thought, oh my God, what, what if I have the virus? And I... So, I went to the hospital, uh, Toronto General Hospital. I went to the hospital and um, they tested me for the virus and thank God I don't have the virus. It was pneumonia that I came down with. So, I came down with pneumonia. Hello? Yeah, hi, Rach, it's me. M Mom, it's five Mom. Nine. I called to pray. I know. Mom, 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 I can't oh, talk. Mom, 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 I can't talk right now. What, you have a... a Mom, there? I can't talk right now. We'll see. I'll see ya. Okay, I'll, I'll just... Don't forget your medication. I'll, 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 I'll call... call back after? I'll call you back, okay? Okay, bye. Bye. Um, sorry about that. Um, so yes, I ended up in, in the hospital. I'm okay. I'm totally okay. I'm home now and everything's good. But what I learned through that process, you know, when you're suspected, suspected of COVID, um, at Toronto General Hospital, at least, they 
put you into um, just this room with nothing in it. No TV, no friends, no family, no nothing. And so you have a lot of time to think. So I was really, really scared to tell you the truth. I know I say, fear not, the Lord is with you and, and the Lord is with you, but it was a real testing of my faith this week. Anyway, I was thinking of all of the sermons that I put forth uh, since the COVID thing started. And um, I was thinking of that and I was thinking of how how the Lord had, has been using me um, for his glory and I was I was thinking of the last seven years of preaching and um, what, what the Lord's been doing to me and how he's been working to me and uh, what I came to was um, there was an old show uh, called Martin and he used to always say this he, he used to always say to his girlfriend Gina him and his girlfriend lived together and it, and it was uh, kind of a funny show in the 90s he used to always say to his girlfriend he also used to always say oh hell no and I was thinking of this um, when I was lying in the bed and having nothing to do and scared that scared out of my mind that I had uh, the virus and I was thinking if the devil thinks he can stop me hell no 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 he's not gonna stop me preaching he's not gonna stop me spreading the word of God he is not gonna stop me there is nothing he can do because what God put in me is for me and what God put in me is for the world so he's not going to stop me he's not going to win and church whatever he whatever he's put in you today do it it doesn't matter what he's he's saying or what what is going on if God's put in you what he's put in you just say to the devil, hell no, you're not going to stop me. Hell is not going to stop me. And, te and tell the devil, no. Tell the devil, you are not going to defeat me. You are not going to hack me. You are not going to take my joy. You are not going to take my health. You are not going to take my peace. For too long the devil or the evil one has been trying to take our peace um, in several different ways and you just have to get a, get a Martin anointing and say hell no you are not going to take my peace you are not going to take my joy you are not going to take my family it is mine it is the Lord's and whatsoever is the Lord's you can't touch it you tried in the garden of Garden of Eden you failed. You tried throughout the scriptures you failed. And the devil will fail all the time and the Lord will always win. He he tried to fail with me this week. There were several times where I sat in that big room alone um, where I said, will I ever get out of this? And the devil said, you'll never get out of this. You, you'll die but there was a little voice inside me said yes you will get out of it and yes you will preach something wonderful from it so share this testimony with with um whoever you think will benefit from from it and know that i'm doing well 
and know that I'm on anti antibiotics and I'm I'm doing really well. Um, but it's been trying, and um, but as David says, though my faith has been tried, I will come out as pure gold. Gold has to be tried in the fire, and this week I went through the fire and came out as pure gold. So whatever you're facing, you can come through it. You will come through it. Don't let the devil lie to you and say to you, this is the end. Don't let the devil lie to you and say to you that you can't that you can't come out of this. You can and you will. And he will use this as a testimony for me to 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 show people that God is able and that he that he is his his plan is greater. He thinks he he's gonna stop me preaching on on the internet. Hell no. He's he thinks he's gonna put me down like that. No, Rachel ain't going down like that. Neither are you. We need to be tough as uh, set our face like like flint and just know that the Lord is our God and He will be with us. He is with us. He is always with us. And there's nothing that the devil can try, nothing that the devil can do to, to ever put us down unless we let him. There were many times this week, especially when I was sitting in the big room and when I was um, declared negative and uh, brought upstairs to another patient floor, um, that I thought, this is the end. I'm never going to get to preach. I'm never going to get to listen to another sermon. I'm never going to get to preach another sermon. And there was a moment in time where I was feeling so sorry for myself and so, like, what am I going to do? This is the end. Um, and I began to sing the blessing. Um, from Carrie Underwood and Elevation and Worship. Um, and I began to uh, think of the story of how that song came to be. Uh, um, how uh, Stephen Furtick, uh, Chris Brown of Elevation Worship, and C Cody, Cody Carnes and his wife, Carrie Joe were were sitting and writing another song in a room in the room, and when the writing session was over, um, Stephen Burdick just uh, recorded uh, uh, this the what would be the catalyst for this song uh, called the blessing. And uh, he recorded uh, the lyrics, what would be the start of the lyrics to a song called The Blessing. And when he was done recording it, um, they said, after this long, like 12 hour day, like nine hour day, they said, what is that? Like the room just stopped. And they said, uh, uh, let's work on that a bit more. So they decided to work on it and work on the song called The Blessing. And when you hear the story of this song and how it, it wasn't written, it was sent. Uh, and when things are sent, you just have to catch them. Um, they were talking about this on Worship Together, which is a podcast that re reviews uh, different worship songs. And they said the everything was there, but they just had to catch it and put it into uh, order. 
Um, so he said the song was written so fast and it was written on the Wednesday on the Wednesday night performed on the Sunday night performed on the Sunday service put on YouTube that Friday and now is blessing a whole bunch of people you see those four people were just willing to um, to 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 do God's bidding willing to say okay we're tired we're hungry we want to go home but the Lord has uh, uh, delivered this song to us so we need to work on it and um, I've been watching Elevation Ministries for a long time um, since 2017 and usually what happens they write a song they sit on it for a few weeks or a few months then they sing it to the church and then they sing it five or six times and then there's this big thing oh this song is coming out and then it comes out not with the blessing the the blessing was written sung and out within a week and after it came out we were all told that we had to stay home and churches were closed so i believe that that song was sent to the world that song was not written it was sent by god because he knew because he knew that millions of people would need that encouragement would need to pray that blessing over their families and when i heard that song that first Sunday, the, the live recording, I was like, this is not a song. This is a clarion call that, that the Lord is calling um, to, let, to let his people know that he's still in control and he's, and he's got it. And it's just been so, it's just been so wonderful how God's, uh, been working uh, with that song and it's going to be wonderful how God will use my testimony of what happened to me this week um, dealing with um, what I was what I was dealing with um, my, my doubt my fear my angst and frustration but the Lord has a reason for everything and I don't want you to feel so the sorry for me oh Rachel this is I'm sorry that this happened to you um I, I'm and in this and in this um <laughs> um I heard a sermon recently when the battle chooses you well as I was sit sitting there as I had this time on my hands in the hospital um, I was like this battle chose me for a reason this battle chose me because it knew that God knew that I was strong enough to deal with it um, he knows that you are strong enough to deal with whatever battle you're facing. He knows that you're strong enough to cope with whatever you are dealing with. Don't give up. Don't quit. Believe me, there are times this week where I wanted to quit. Where I wanted to say, God, throw it. Let's go. But I couldn't because I knew the lives that, that the ministry that God put in me will save. And I can't give up on those lives and neither can you. You don't have permission to give up. You don't have permission 
from God to throw in the towel. You've got to press. You've got to press towards the mark of the prize of the high calling of God. He has a high calling on your life. You cannot not afford to give up. You need to press towards that high calling. It's tough, I know, right now. But stick it out. You'll get to your destination. You'll get to what he's called you to to do. And pick up the lessons that he's called you to learn at that time. Everything we go through, we are assigned to pick up different lessons. So what is the lesson that God is teaching you from this? Well, the biggest lesson that I learned was I'm more than what I think. Like Scotia Bank would say, I'm richer than I think. What inside me is so much more than what I know. The tenacity he's given me, the word he's given me is so much greater and so much deeper. I wasn't even going to do um, this until until a long time and the Lord I just felt impressed to do it now to let you know that I'm fine and God's a healer and he is able and a couple times this week it was tough but I made it through and you can make it through um, the, the last thing I want to say is there was a story uh, when I was a little kid called The Little Engine That Could. It was about this little engine who, who was very little, but these toys needed to go up the mountain. And every big, bigger engine said, no, I'm too busy. No, I can't do this. And the... The little engine said, I can do it. They, and the big, bigger engines laughed at her. And she said, and she did it. She said, I think I can, I think I can, I think I can. Until she brought the toys up the mountain to the little girls and boys who needed them. So... There is somebody out there listening to me right now who is about to give up, who is about, who is about to throw in the towel, who is about to say, God, this is too big for me. And the Lord is telling me to tell you to say to yourself, not I think I can, I know God can, I know God can, I know God can. Just keep just keep saying that to yourself. And he can and he will use you as a vessel. Let me pray for you before we sign off. Father, I, pr I praise you and I worship you. And I hope my story helps somebody. Lord God, I know that this is a tough time for all of us. Lord, but keep us strong, Lord. Keep us in your word, God. Give us peace. Give us love, Lord God. Wrap your arms around the world, Lord Jesus. The world needs you more than ever, Lord Jesus. Cause your generals to rise and, pro and proclaim your name. This is not time to give up. This is our time to band together and rise. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So guys, share this testimony if you if you want. If you think it's going to help somebody, have a wonderful evening. I'll be praying for you. See you on Sunday for story time Sunday. Bye. It's going to be story time Sunday uh, 19 this week. Bye.